The New York Times, which is not losing money but not making money the way it used to, uh, is very worried because although circulation is going up, ad revenue is going down. So they say, all right, the future's got to be on the Internet. Now, we put the New York Times on the Internet. For years, we kept alive the myth that this wasn't hurting our circulation. But now, everyone recognizes it is a way of cannibalizing it. If you can get it for free on the Internet, who's going to go out and buy it or who's going to subscribe and have it delivered at home? So there's this sudden new fascination for the Internet. But they can't go out and hire another 500 reporters just for the Internet. So a foreign correspondent now is expected to feed the Internet. And so if you're in uh, Paris and the riots are going on, you don't have a full day to do all your reporting and your interviewing and go to the scene and get comments and everything, sit back and then have a, because of the time difference and a little glass of wine and then an hour and a half to pull it all together, you've got to be calling the internet, you, you know, your desk in New York and giving them updates as the day goes on and writing, sometimes actually writing little 500 bits to feed them so they can put your byline on the internet. That, that's become the single greatest gripe of foreign correspondents today is that they're in too much touch with the office and satellite phones are another kind of horrible thing because with a satellite phone, they're called all the time. It's like calling, you know, from Manhattan to the Bronx. And they're calling, well, can you add this? Can you change this? We'd like to move this paragraph up. Uh, it was much better in the old days when there was a kind of radio silence and you sent your story and you had a lot of time to do it, I think. You know, I'm sounding like very much of an old fogey, but I think it really was. You sound like Joe McCray. <laughs> I think it was better. <laughs>